Hi learners, it's actually a, an awesome privilege to be with you again on the e-learning platform and uh, we'll be considering a topic memory unit under the subject computer studies. By the end of this class we hope to be able to explain the computer memory and the memory unit. Secondly, we hope to state the types of memory and thirdly, describe the primary and secondary memory. Then lastly, we should state the differences between primary and secondary memory. Computer memory, by definition, this is a space where the computer uses to store data and information electronically, which can be recalled, erased, or changed. It can also be defined as the work area in the computer where data can be held, copied, and retrieved. You know, when you speak of computer memory, you can also make reference to yourself as human. The entire breadth of the computer system is coming from a human because human beings actually made computer. So most of the analogy of human autonomy, uh, anatomy is actually used to describe or to, 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 to birth that of the computer. Every human have what we call memory. You have a memory that's located in your brain where you're able to keep things for either a very long period of time and some short uh, period of time, memories, and uh, you can keep some things permanently. And there are things that had happened over 20 years and you can still what, recall. There are things that happened just yesterday. For instance, you had a dream and you woke up early in the morning. You can actually recall what you dreamt about. These are what the positioning of how the human memory or the human brain works. Similarly, the computer also would function in that very order. As we go on with our studies, you would see how the memory of the computer is and how it is being word categorized. The following can be stored in the computer memory. One, we have the system softwares and uh, the application softwares. The computer memory, just from the definition, it says is a space, is an allocation, is a specific area whereby data and information are stored word electronically. And they could actually be picked upon or they could be referred to, they could be erased, they could actually be edited and so on and so forth. So therefore, we have software such as a system software is being what stored in the computer memory. And uh, I'll be using the word memory and storage uh, interchangeably. You could actually mean the same thing at some point. So you still go with me when I say memory, I also refer to as what storage. So therefore, the, the, the system software, which are what, for instance, the operating system, which is the most important software for every computer system. No computer system can actually function without what the operating system. The operating system is the first software that is being installed in any gadget, whether your phones or your laptops or whatsoever electronic device that is computerized because it, was, it controls the entire activities of what the computer. So this very operating system is also stored what, in a specific portion of the memory of the computer, computer which we are going to be seeing much more later. Then we also have application softwares. Application softwares are seen as what softwares that are used for specific purposes. For example, we have the Microsoft Office. You know that your Microsoft Office would not work if your system software has not been installed. No operating system, no any other uh, uh, software can work if the operating system is not installed. So other application softwares like your game softwares, your WhatsApp, your Facebook app, and so on, and all of those applications on your phones or on your laptops that are currently running are running because there's an operating system that governs the entire activities in the computer system. So all of these things are stored word in the computer memory or storage. So the computer storage or memory is extremely important. You could actually imagine what the system can do without storage. It's not possible. So the storage of data and information is very vital. 
and we're going to be seeing how the computer world does that. Programs execution and data processing takes place in the memory. To be able to do its work of data processing effectively, the computer should have an area or a unit to store its data, instructions, or programs so that the processor can make use of them easily. Such areas are called the memory unit or the storage unit. Your computer system works in this way. Um, in previous classes we had, I was able to show you the motherboard and I described the components of the motherboard. The components of the motherboard had, have a place where we call the RAM that is kept very close what, to the central processing unit. So there must be a memory unit that keeps details of data to be processed by the computer. Thereafter, the central processing unit can pick all of this data and what run them simultaneously. For instance, the computer does a lot of multitasking. If you use an Android phone, you would notice that in the, with your Android phone, you can open more than 10 apps at a moment, and there's a place you can, you can only minimize them, and they are still running in the background. How does all of this thing happen? There is a memory that is responsible in holding all of those processes put together, then the central processing unit can actually pick it. If you're currently chatting on WhatsApp and um, eventually you want to go back and play a music, the moment you minimize WhatsApp and you go to click on the music you want to be playing or whatsoever, the video, or you want to play any other app, what happens is that the memory that is close to the central processing unit keeps stock of all of these word processes. The moment you click on it, it is what replaced in the central processing unit to enable what, what you desire at the moment to run. And that's how the computer works, but it does that in milliseconds, of course, it's very fast. So you would actually not even know when all of these things happen. But behind the scene, that is what happens. So the memory is responsible in keeping a lot of processes for what data processing. And that's how it goes. We would be considering types of memory. We have basically two types of memory in the computer system. First, we have the primary memory. And secondly, we have the secondary memory. The primary memory, it's uh, that which is also called the main memory. We also call it the main storage, just like I said, the primary storage and the internal storage. Uh, my learners, you have to take note of this. Um, for exam purposes, you could be asked, what are the properties of internal memory? Or these are examples of internal memory, except if you don't know that the other name for a primary memory is internal memory, you will run into trouble. So take note that this word or the uh, primary memory could also be called main memory, main storage, primary storage, and possibly internal storage. So take note of this name. Likewise, the secondary memory, which is also called the secondary storage, an auxiliary memory, an auxiliary storage, external storage or a backing storage. These are all word names that are word accorded to the secondary memory, which you must take note of for exams word purposes. So we'll be considering the primary storage first, and we're going to see what the primary storage constitutes and how it functions. Um, this is a part of the computer memory where the processor would first go to whenever data has to be processed. If the data to be processed is not in the memory, the processor would have to load it first before any process can begin. 
we have basically two types of what primary memory we have the random access memory and what the read only memory which is the rom and the ram the random access memory so the the primary storage before we discuss the rom and ram is one of the most important memory in the computer it performs the major task is responsible for the startup of the computer and the basic functionalities that enable the computer functions effectively the number one is the random access memory that is the ram so if you ask what's the full meaning of ram ram stands for what the random access memory it is a computer memory available to the user for creating loading or running programs and for the temporary storage and what manipulation of data just like i said earlier on on the motherboard the ram is one of the memory that is kept very close to the central processing unit where where the processor is there the ram is very close so all of our programs all of the uh, processes we hope to run all of the pages we open on our computers on our phones at a specific moment must first of all be loaded on your random access memory the random access memory has what we call registers these registers take stock just like your register in class where your name is being placed and you're being called so 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 person present so so person absent and so on all of those processes you require or you request the computer to run for you are kept in the ram and in the ram every of those information is picked one after the other into the the processor to run so that you can be able to what, see what you desire to see so the ram is volatile in nature these are some of the characteristics which you must take note of a primary uh, 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 memory the ram is volatile and when i say volatile what do i mean to a lot of science students you know the mentholated spirit once you pour it possibly on, on on your hand give it some milliseconds it disappears into the thin air so what are we saying it's uh, it's it's it, it disappears the memory or the data that are being kept in the ram could what disappear that's what we mean by being volatile once light is being what taken off the 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 data or the processes you've kept inside your what your 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 ram goes off if not for recent technology a practical example is your microsoft word when you're typing and typing and typing whether you've typed 100 pages and you did not save your work and possibly be, or unfortunately your your system is a desktop and once uh, the power source is taken off everything you've done goes off but thank god microsoft word have actually included an aut automatic word saving for you as you're working so and that's what we mean every processes that are kept in the ram if not saved once light or once supply for power is off from your system it goes off and nothing would happens if you if you take note when once you switch off your 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 phone for instance your android phone all of the pages the whatsapp pages the facebook app the call bars and all of those things the call logs and the sms you've opened that were currently running before you restarted your system goes off so you must take note that the ram is volatile it does not actually keep uh, data for a very long time it stores a copy of the system software program that is the operating system that controls the general operations of the computer the moment your system is booted what the first thing it does i told you the operating system is the first software that must run without it no other software can actually run the operating system a copy of it is loaded on your ram to enable you run all other programs you intend to run in your computer and um, the bigger the ram size the faster the microprocessor this is very common especially when you want to buy a laptop you're an it person one of the things they consider they call it spec spec stands for specification you would ask you what is the spec of this very computer what are they saying in essence what are the properties or what how can the computer what deliver if you have a very small ram the processes in your system will be very slow 
Anytime your phone is very slow or your laptop is very slow in processing information, one of the things you must look back to is how large is your RAM? If you're using a 1 gig RAM and you want to do graphics programming and graphics, you want to run graphics or a very heavy program, you discover that your system will be very slow because, because your RAM size is what? Small. So you must take note that the larger the RAM size, the faster. Because when the RAM size is large, it's able to accommodate a lot of activities and eventually save them for further processing. Then we also have what we refer to as the read-only memory, also an example of what the primary memory. The read-only memory ROM is a part of the computer's main memory that contains the basic programs that boot the computer system when it is turned on. The ROM contains what we call the BIOS, basic input and output of what the computer. The moment you click on your computer or your phone, the random, the read-only memory is loaded. There are instructions that has been kept. It consists of the startup of the computer. Once the computer starts up, that is when all other word memory would come up. So it consists the startup. The ROM cannot be erased. It contains permanent data or instructions. That is, the ROM, the ROM is not what? Volatile. That's one difference between the ROM and the RAM. RAM is volatile, but the ROM is not volatile. Even when the system goes off, the instructions that are embedded inside your ROM still remains intact. They are not tempered with, even when power is lost. Because the computer, right from the branding or the people who made the computer, these are instructions that were stationed permanently if you observe there are certain things you want to delete in your phone and you cannot delete them or in your laptop these are basic information that if tampered with they would affect the entire performance of the system and that's why the manufacturer would ensure that they are what embedded in the ROM and they are given an option that you cannot read or write but for everything in your RAM you can read or write it is known volatile. I've said that already. Information don't get missing. It can read from, but cannot be written to. That is read only. You can only read it, those instructions. You cannot edit them. You cannot add up an additional thing to your ROM, ex to your ROM except for special cases and by manufacturers. But for a normal user, you can't alter what the instructions there. If the content get lost for any reason, the computer would not start. Yes, that's very true. Because it consists the basic startup of the computer, except those very content are kept in order. You would lose everything and the computer would not even start. It contains the instruction that tells the CPU how to work with the different parts of the computer. That is also very true. That is both the input and the output. Then we go to the second type of memory, which is what the secondary memory. We had discussed the first type, which is a primary memory, and we said it's made up of the RAM and the ROM. The secondary memory, it is a storage device that is not under the direct control of the central processing unit, that is a CPU, and is generally found outside the computer. Example of this very uh, device includes the flash drives we use, the CD, that is a compact disc, the DVD, that is the uh, uh, digital video disc, and the external hard disk, and so on and so forth. The secondary storage devices are not under the direct control of what? The central processing unit, unlike the primary storage device, that we actually need them for the secondary for, for every process to take place. But for the secondary, it's not under the direct control of what? The, the, the central processing unit. They are devices that are able to keep what? Data. Or numerous what? Massive data. 
It stores information for future use. The secondary storage, as you can all believe with me, you keep information in your flash for future use. On your CD for future use, you can, you can always play your CD or your DVDs and watch information that you really need to watch and do all that you need to do because what is a secondary word storage and those informations are kept for future use. They might not be used immediately, but they are used in one way or the other uh, when needed. Then it supplements the main storage. Yes, it supplements. And the word supplement is just like it works in line or it helps the main storage. Before everything is being done in your secondary device like your flash, you have a movie you want to play and it's in your flash. Once you are trying to play it from the flash, the first thing that happens is that that very movie must be taken towards your primary what, memory. And when it's taken to your primary memory, it's being what, run at you on, on your what, primary memory. That is the RAM. Then you can what, view. So every information that is in the secondary memory must be taken to the primary memory for pro further processing. It is slower than the main memory. That is very true. It's actually massive and it's very uh, uh, bulky. So therefore, a lot of information are kept inside. So that makes it what, a bit slower because uh, the primary has to be faster than the secondary. If not, data, or data processing will be extremely slow, which would not be good for anyone. It provides the safest and the most secure form of massive data storage using the computer. That is very true. A lot of people use secondary storages for what? For backing up. Big industries, uh, big computer television stations, radio stations, they have backup for data, for everything they do. They save, save them either in a drive or in a CD or somewhere that it could actually be picked and be worked upon. Very, very important because how important information is, it must be kept, it must what, be backed. Just like a bank, all of the details, all of the details needed are saved as some backup and are kept elsewhere. Paradventure, anything happens that they lost the present data, they can always fall back toward the other. The data in the secondary storage can easily be transferred into the primary storage once the computer is booted. That is also very true. Then, uh, finally, we'll be considering the differences between the primary and the secondary memory. It's important you know these students because these questions come in your WIAC terminal exams, you are asked what are the differences between the primary and the secondary memory. The number one difference is that the primary memory is what an internal memory. That means it's always kept what inside, is inside the computer, while the secondary memory is what external. The primary memory is under the direct control of the central processing unit, as earlier on explained. And, uh, but the secondary memory is not under the direct control of the central processing unit. The primary unit cannot be used for massive data storage. You cannot keep very large data in the primary memory. But for the secondary memory, it can be used for what? massive data storage. The primary memory includes the RAM and the ROM. But the secondary memory, on the other hand, does not include what? the RAM and the ROM. So students, I'm very sure you have learned a lot from this. And uh, just in summary, we're able to see what the computer memory, which we say what is a space or is an allocation or is a space, is a work area where data could and information could what be stored electronically and they could be picked, they could be edited, they could be copied and they could be deleted. And we saw the two basic types of what memory, we have the primary memory and the secondary memory. We saw that primary memory includes the RAM and the ROM. Secondary memory includes the flash drives, the CD that's a compact disk, the external hard disk, and so on. And we're also able to see the differences between what the primary memory and what the secondary memory. Um, but I would not leave you idle. I have an assignment for you to actually keep you busy and 
you the assignment goes thus. So you list in number one, define computer storage or memory device. Number two, define describe the primary and the secondary memory. Number three, give four differences between the primary and the secondary memory. I come again. Number one, define computer storage or memory device. Number two, describe the primary and the secondary memory. Number three, give four differences between the primary and the secondary memory. And you could actually make references to HIIT PLC Computer Studies for secondary, for senior secondary education, and also advanced computer science for senior secondary schools. And you could always Google most of this information. Uh, for every computer science student or computer studies student, Google is your friend. For every information you need, you could always go to Google and ask, and you would have what, what you need. Um, when you're done with this assignment that you want to submit, you can contact me on my number 080-364-20271. 080-364-20271. My name is Mr. Ezekiel Abrak Antony, and um, I would encourage you to remember our food for thought, he who fails to plan, plans to fail. So keep studying hard, my learners, and uh, sky will be your starting point. Keep safe and keep learning. God bless you. Thank you.